Hi, my name is Gianna Goodale, and I'm a senior industrial design student at the International Center for Creativity. And this is my project, Photopia, an immersive experience designed to cultivate habits for better physical fitness. Most businesses would go bankrupt if no one showed up. But one specific industry profits the more that you don't. I'm talking about big business gyms. Last year, Americans flushed $397 million down the drain with unused gym memberships and contracts. My Planet Fitness I go to has a total capacity for 300 people. But it has about 6,000 members, with memberships starting at $10 a month. No way the gym wants everyone to be showing up to do their crunches before work. Planet Fitness's business model revolves around the New Year's resolution, but after February, they do little to nothing to helping you stay in the gym. To be fair, there's a lot of reasons beyond that that makes exercise, especially strength training, an undesirable thing to do, sometimes almost impossible. I'm solving for people like me who can't sink thousands of dollars into solutions that don't work, because I want to believe in a world where exercise is really fun. We look forward to waking up and getting to do it. We have pride of our effort and continued growth, and it promotes a community where we encourage each other to be better. Exercise is so phenomenal for your health. If you met the minimum requirements of two times a week, it would be like taking a pill that makes you live 10 years longer. It immediately gives you the happiness-producing neurotransmitters like dopamine, noradrenaline, and serotonin, as well as increased metabolism, bone health, heart health, and a decreased chance of diabetes. It increases your immune health and decreases your chance of cancer by 30%. I have really good news for you all. I guarantee everyone can attain this. For those who are skeptical, I understand why. Because despite the $96 billion industry of fitness, most of us have failed to reach our own fitness goals. This isn't all your fault. It's because the fitness industry lacks a major key to actually helping us, and I'll share what that is next. In Baumeister's study on willpower and self-discipline, he separated a group of people in half. One group could eat these cookies, but the other group had to eat these radishes. Then he asked both groups to solve this puzzle, but he didn't actually tell them that this puzzle was impossible. Those who ate the cookies lasted 60% longer trying to figure out that puzzle than those that ate the radishes. Scientists have learned that willpower isn't a skill that some of us have and some of us don't. It's actually like a muscle which grows and, and can be depleted by use. You can actually run out of willpower. This translates into our lives and struggles with fitness. Around New Year's, we start to eat the radishes, giving up sweets, going to the gym after long hours of work, and dealing with our kids. And then we face a roadblock, just big enough to where we give up. We can't handle one more thing because we have been completely depleted of willpower. Even deeper than willpower are the core motivations that our brain has that gets us to do anything. This is based off of the fog behavior model. Our first core motivator is to seek pleasure and not pain. Our brains are wired to escape pain and seek out pleasure. This is something called urge serving. Urge serving looks like snoozing your alarm, eating that cookie, or binge watching New Girl for the third time in a row. And while that isn't bad, the long-term outcome of those repeated behaviors aren't the most helpful. However, there is another type of pleasure that comes from doing the hard things, like waking up early to watch the sunrise, finishing your work on that classic car, and going for a run. This is a type that usually look, brings long-term rewards. Secondly, we want to seek acceptance and not rejection. We want to be a part of a network of people who accept us for ourselves and we do anything not to be rejected. And lastly, we want to seek hope and not fear. We love stories about the underdog. The whole concept of sports is that we believe our team can make it to the playoffs. It's likely that if you don't have a desire to work out, your perception is that exercise is painful or uncomfortable, fearful, you're afraid of failing, and rejecting, either us rejecting ourselves or others rejecting us. However, if you desire and enjoy working out, your perception is that exercise is pleasing, maybe even fun, hopeful, you believe in yourself, and accepting, you have a community or buddy that comes alongside to help you. This is where the fitness industry has failed us, because we don't need our own personal trainer at our beck and call to be fit. To truly change our habits of exercise over the long term, we have to change our perception of what exercise is. Using tricks to manipulate yourself into doing things you don't like often backfires. Instead, we have to generate real value for people that benefits people again and again, and that is the core of my project. So then I looked at what are our systems already in existence that align with our core motivators, but also help us to grow our willpower so it isn't so easily depleted. 
and that's when it came to traditional sports and esports, or MMOGs, massively multiplayer online games like Fortnite and League of Legends. When I was 15, I moved from Australia to Texas. The first time I had ever played competitive soccer, I learned to love fitness. I loved the self-mastery of the game and the energy of being on the field. I found hope in getting better and seeing my team make playoffs in state. And I found acceptance in a group of people who were my friends and supporters on and off the field. My mindset towards fitness changed too. And I went from a dangerous mentality about self-image to wanting to cultivate my willpower to be a stronger athlete giving me the self-efficacy that I, if I try something and be really bad at it, I can work my way up to being captain of my team. Last year, the Super Bowl was watched by 100 million people. The year before, the League of Legends World Championship was watched by 100 million people. While it might not encompass the physical aspects of traditional sports, playing video games competitively requires fast reflexes, attention to detail, resource management, and decision-making, just to name a few. The power of these games is that through their combination of storytelling and technology, they inspire collaborative problem solving, they encourage self-efficacy, they treat anxiety, and are phenomenal for creating positive emotions and trust. Whether it's esports or traditional sports, they have the power to use all three core motivators, pleasure, hope, and acceptance. This is where my solution is found. By incorporating community, story, and technology into competitive fitness, you can set yourself up and future gen generations for better physical, mental, and social health. This brings me to my solution, Fitopia. Fitopia is a crossroads of traditional and esports for weightlifting. Fitopia is a system which is comprised of a sport, AR technology storytelling, experiential space, and an online and in-person community. When I first started this project, I had my heart set on making a product, but the problem showed me that one solo thing can't possibly solve for a many problems with fitness, and that's how I landed on experience design. Experiential design focuses on the human interactions with built and di digital environments to meet the user needs. It creates impactful experiences thinking through every touch point in the system to change behavior, mindset, and emotion. Have you ever wondered why social media is so addictive? It's because consumer scientists know the formula of getting us hooked on their products and is completely based around how we build habits. This is the basis of the Fitopia system. It's meant to create good habits for fitness. Habits are three parts, trigger, action, and reward. We're triggered to act internally by our emotions, our routines, and the people and places in our lives, then externally by ads, friends, and or our health. Next is action, and this is when the person has decided to try Fitopia. When you join Fitopia, we onboard you to a place to place you on a team and then assign you a lifting type. This initiates the beginning of the immersive story that you are participating in during your time at Fitopia. Your AirPods are synced to collaborate with your workout for an audio experience, and your fitness tracking devices will be counting all your reps and weights. You compete for 45 minutes and three rounds of exercises. You are rewarded through the tribe, which is social rewards, through yourself, which is self-mastery and growing, and then the winning team is announced, which is a reward. And then you're rewarded by your personal performance and your health. For any good habit forming product to be successful, it requires an extra step, investment. This is when the user does a little bit of work to make the product better for next time, increasing the likeliness that they'll come back to it. You invest in Fitopia with your community, the story and the data it collects to make future workouts better and more rewarding. This is a double diamond research method. And this is where we are in the journey to Fitopia. We have defined the problem and have begun ideating. My next three phases is the, pr the process, ideation, testing, and final production. To support the system, I had to research immersive tech capabilities and choose augmented or virtual reality. The problems with virtual reality is that the sweaty headset gets um, gross over time from exercise. It's isolating between you and other people and your own, you and your own body. And then it's hazardous. If you're lifting weights, it's not good to have your eyes covered by a headset. The solutions that are presented with AR is that it's an extension to your senses. There's no headset required, and it's not only visual augmentation. Augmented reality can take the form of augmented audio. The game Zombie Run uses audio to create an illusion that you're being chased by zombies to make you run faster. The character voices you hear, sound effects, and music have all been very convincing to make people actually feel like they're being chased by zombies, and then increasing their performance because of that. 
Another augmented audio game called Pair Play uses two players sharing a pair of AirPods to act out roles in the same story to complete an interactive performance with separate voice commands for each player and sound effects that match up with your partner's action. Think of it like those old choose-your-own-adventure stories you may have read when you were young, but this time you're actually part of it. In the past decade, we've seen wearable fitness tech become more accessible and have increasing capabilities like being able to count your reps, record your weights, and give you live haptic feedback to let you know when your heart rate is too high. The data can also be used to improve your future workouts to make sure that you're lifting more each week and to always be improving, just like a personal trainer on your wrist. The next step was testing. Constructing the game required three phases of trials where I created a full body workout which could only be completed with full team's participation. Teammates had to de depend on one another to finish their sets and work together. The first round focused on storytelling within the game, connecting actions with story cues. The second focused on competition and teamwork. What was more important, team camaraderie or the competitive edge? And finally, the third combined the best of the two and created a working point system, where heavyweight lifters were encouraged to lift heavy with less reps and hit cardio-focused fo lifters lifted light with higher reps and intensity. After each trial, I got immediate feedback on what they liked, what they thought could be improved, and how it measured up to their regular workouts. Photopia can be experienced in any way you feel most comfortable to do it. There is an application which can allow you to work out on your own while connecting to your team rem remotely, or with friends in person with the app and your own equipment. And finally, in the Photopia gym for the full experience. It's kind of like watching a movie at home versus at the theater. Both are an enjoyable experience, but one is more immersive, and you get to choose your own adventure. Congratulations on signing up for Photopia. This is one step on your journey to lifelong fitness. First, let me ask you some questions. I'll ask you questions like, what is your experience level with lifting? What are your fitness goals? And what is your preferred weightlifting method? Now that you've completed those, let's get you set up with a player position. Each person works out differently because of their different goals. This is why we have five player archetypes that all vary. The three on the left are diver, vanguard, rogue, and they are low weight, high rep, cardio intensive workout styles. And then the two on the right are defense players, which are healer and tank. They are high weight and low rep for building muscle and explosive movement. Tan goes by Superman 24 and his style is tank, which means he's a heavy lifter. His goals are to gain muscle and gain strength. And he's also created an archetype player on the right and within the app. Lexi goes by Lift Chick 123. Her style is diver and she's a low weight, high cardio style. Her goals are to have good aerobic health and lean muscle. This is the home screen of the Photopia app, and this is meant to make you feel like you're joining a game, not just a gym. You can sync up to games using this app and your AirPods, as well as access the other parts of the app to find your workouts and your data. Here's an example of how the Photopia augmented audio would work. So each team listens to the backstory of the game while they're warming up, and then they hear cues from their AirPods with character voices, sound effects, and music. In this case, the captain might say to them, the creatures are climbing up our ship, throw the bombs at them. So they might be doing med ball throws at the floor. And then he might be saying, looks like they're running, they're, they're starting to run off. Good job team. And this just cues that the next exercise is coming up. And then finally, we're, si we're under heavy fire, safely pass the weapons, but stay close to the ground. This might cue the people to start moving uh, yoga balls to their partner or another exercise. And to ensure that they're doing the right exercise, a referee is there to show them as well as correct them if they're doing the wrong form. This is a journey map of the structure of the game. Players warm up for five minutes and then are led into the first set for five minutes and then another set for five minutes. And lastly, a game of last one standing for a scenario of apps. This occurs for three rounds of three chapters, and the team with the most points at the end wins the game. Here is an example of the exercise within the game. You arrive at Photopia with your team, and you warm up and listen to the backstory, which immerses you into a fictional story. If you're an attack player, you go head-to-head -head with the opposing team to score as many revolutions in the workout as possible. Meanwhile, your wristband checks your reps.
If you're a heavy lifter, you're on the defense side. Your weight and reps can also be counted by your wristband. Finally, both teams with both attacking and defending sides play last one standing where they do an ab workout for two minutes. When you're working out with the Photopia app, all of your weight lifted is tracked as well as how many sets you accomplished. Then it shows a play-by-play -play of your strongest moments, your heart rate, and other data. This data is so helpful because you can then use it in your future solo workouts. If you started at 15 pounds, it'll bump you up to 20, just to make sure you're always improving. It also saves workouts, so if you like the arms and back workout, it can provide that for you, since you trust what you know most. Now we're ready to visit the Photopia Gym. The first thing that you'll see when you walk in is this hallway, or what I call the Genesis Point. You can use the locker rooms before the workout, but the space builds your excitement to enter the arena up the stairs. Now we're in the orange room. This is for stretching and waiting for the previous game gamers to leave. Here you'll listen to the backstory and the orange color is meant to be energizing and exciting. Here is the workout space. The mood lighting can change to any color that the story centers around. It's open and large to accommodate four teams at a time and for all the teams to be together when they're playing. Here's an image to show the large space of the open space in the gym. And this shows how much gym equipment can actually fit on the gym floor. Finally, you'll end the day with your friends in the experiential cafe. You'll get some drinks, maybe play some arcade games or dance on the Dance Dance Revolution floor. Now the Photopia system accomplished three goals. It aligns with our three core motivators, pleasure, hope, and acceptance. It increases our willpower by getting us to do something difficult and push through. And it makes fitness accessible to anyone with a remote app and its scalability. I hope this presentation compelled you to seek out better solutions for fitness, and for the time being, it was fun playing with you. See you next game.